newspaper column, person on the street. Talked to a lot of people from in town and out of town. People from out of town, they like our meter rates. They like our garage rates. They also don't mind paying $10 to get a ticket. So you definitely have to increase them. <clears throat> and if they're not paid within 10 days, there should be a penalty on top of that, too. Um, I know that part of the reason for this is, is looking at structured parking and looking for ways to uh, <coughs> cover some of the debt service. And there's another parking garage on the horizon over at Polk Street. Now, when this concept originally um, came into play, uh, one of the things that was being looked at at that time was the use of TIF funding, tax increment financing funding, to underwrite some of those costs. My understanding from various sources is that the, um, the TIF funding uh, is sort of dried up and not available for that purpose. Now, I'm one of the three city officials, former city officials, who negotiated the TIF, along with the city solicitor at that time and the director of the Redevelopment Authority. I was the acting director of Community and Economic Development. That TIF can be extended, and it should be. When that TIF was initiated and authorized, the primary purpose was public infrastructure. I'm not going to denigrate the projects that, that have been done, but the Hoover Mason trestle and steel stacks, the Greenway, they were not on the horizon at that point. And so the money never ended up where it was originally intended to go. Streets and parking facilities. If the TIF were to be extended for five years, which I believe is the legal limit that it could be, and it would have to be negotiated with both Northampton County and the Bethlehem Area School District. The TIF revenue derived from that could fund the Polk Street garage. The taxpayers in this city wouldn't have to worry about higher parking rates to help fund a parking deck. And I think that really needs to be looked into before rates are increased. <coughs> it seems to me that there are a number of options that should be considered to counter a meter rate of this increase. I and mean, if, even if you just look at the inflation rate, a dollar ten is where it should be going, not a dollar fifty. Um, but at the end of the day, um, personally, I'm opposed to it. I think it's too much. And I haven't even gotten into the impact that it might have on small businesses, both in the north side and the south side business districts, who both have their dynamics are a little different, and we know what the uh, increase to a dollar did to a number of businesses on the south side. It drove them out. So I think you really need to consider uh, how far you want to go with this, what the long-term impacts are. Uh, you have a potential option to build that Polk Street garage by using the TIF if you can get it extended and work with Northampton County and the Bethlehem Area School District, and that way the um, uh, the residents, the taxpayers of this community, uh, don't have to pay a higher parking tax. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, my name is Jack Basolka. I live up on Garrison Street. Uh, two items I want to bring up. Um, one, in the study that you've done, have you done any cost-cutting measures? You look... I'm not sure I understand. Okay, for example, when, when, when the, the parking authority is operating, we come around in this four-door Jeep, and I owned a Jeep, believe me, which is a gas guzzler, and it seems to me like it's an, a lot of money is spent in the day-to-day -day operations that could be reduced by, is it, you see what I mean? I, I understand cost-cutting, certainly. Okay, but uh, this study did no, nothing on cost-cutting, did it? It did not. Okay, all right. Uh, and have, have they considered also privatization Not that I'm aware of the parking authority. May I, I, have you done that or is it? No, no, no. no. okay. Uh, maybe that should be looked into too. I mean, I'm not, I'm not uh, always in favor.
favor of that, but it, it, just looking at all the options that are available. But I think, well, look, look at the, the cost-cutting uh, uh, measures that could be taken, perhaps they could reduce that, maybe sometimes even significantly. Okay, I mean, we do it at our, on, in our own private lives, our, at our houses when uh, certain costs come up, we, we cut different things or find a way to do it more efficiently or more less expensively. Okay, that's basically my, all I want to say thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jean Tobias on West Lehigh Street. Um, I won't be as eloquent as a gentleman ahead of me, but um, first off, um, mobile now app, love it, find it very convenient, so I'm glad that we're using it. My concern, so I understand the, the desire for turnover um, and to get more cars in and out on, on street parking. My concern is that we might lose foot traffic um, and I was wondering if there were any studies done or did you look at other cities to see what happened when you increase on um, street parking rates? Did the same amount of people come to visit that city or did they see a reduction in foot traffic? Again, the expectation, sorry, the expectation would be to provide um, more availability for the on-street spaces, therefore encouraging higher turnover, which would, uh, again, the result of that would be more foot traffic because you'd have more people in and out of those parking spaces as opposed to a single space being occupied by a single vehicle for four hours which results in you know so many person trips if we can get you know three cars in that same space over those four over that same four hour period you would the expectation would you would increase person trips okay um, I would ask that before you do a rate increase, you look to see at other cities to see what happened when they did increase their on, on street parking rates to see if the businesses, the small businesses, were impacted negatively, positively, or if there was no impact at all. And also, um, you mentioned that there's enough space for the off street parking. And for example, at Music Fest, I know that, you know, Arts Quest does a lot of busing. But do we truly have enough space for off-street parking when you have like Celtic Fest, which is next weekend, or during um, Christmas time, which we know we get a lot of out-of-town visitors for that? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, certainly when you have you know those those high-use times, those high-use events, there's I don't know that there's even enough infrastructure on street and off-street to accommodate demand, so. Generally speaking, you know, the industry designs for the normal condition, not the off-season condition or the high season. So, uh, again, based on, you know, the analysis and the data and, and the studies that were done, based on, you know, typical conditions, there's significantly uh, underutilized off-street infrastructure that could be used to absorb uh, a migration from on-street to off-street. And I am also a fan of the dollar an hour parking rates. I mean, I'm within walking distance, but I prefer to, you know, drive to downtown by them. I feel safe. Um, I like the dollar an hour. Once again, I know a lot of out-of-towners like that as well, too. Um, I prefer to keep it. I'm personally not a fan of the increase in going from $1.50. So um, I would encourage to keep the dollar an hour, find other ways you can do cost-cutting um, for fear of losing foot traffic and losing businesses um, a revenue for the small businesses. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Good evening, Bruce Haynes, 63 West Church Street. Um, I also own a business in downtown on Main Street, very observant of parking situations there the last 20 years, and um, I kind of come from a 180 degree different perspective, which you, which people that know me probably would say this makes sense, um, that I'm not just sort of following in the normal footsteps. Uh, basically, I'd like us to rethink how we think about ourselves and to not consider ourselves in the same peer city group that your study was done, with all due respect. Um, those are all 
older Pennsylvania cities or other cities, mainly in the Northeast, um, all of whom have traditional, uh, the traditional old style parking meter, parking garages, et cetera. But <clears throat> try, to think, try to think of ourselves in a different peer group. Because from my perspective, we should be among the peer groups of progressive cities, not the old model of, of the, the traditional parking logic. And by that I mean, <clears throat> to me, the 50 cents an hour difference to drive people to the parking garages is pretty meaningless. I mean, I don't think anybody is gonna think, gee whiz, I can save, I'm here for three hours, I can save a buck and a half if I go up to Walnut Street Garage instead of parking in front of uh, Johnny's Bagels, <clears throat> for example. I don't, think, I don't think there's any driving motive of, of that 50 cent an hour difference. Um, and I don't think you're ready to put a $5 an hour rate on meters downtown that would maybe make a difference to actually for people to move in that direction, nor would I be recommending anything like that. So my, my point is, I don't really think it changes behavior to do a 50 cent increase in the parking meter rates. So therefore, what it really comes down to is then that the parking meter rate increase is really more about generating more revenues. And if I if I look at the if I the information that was in the morning call, you didn't present any dollar numbers here tonight, but what I saw was that the parking parking meter increase of a dollar to a dollar and a half is going to increase uh, the revenues by two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. And uh, 